Hey everybody, welcome back to Bible from the Duns. Today we're in Psalm chapter 16 and it's day 29 of our Advent book. Alright, Psalm 16, Preacher Hudson is not here because actually that this is what his sermon is on on Sunday. Um, and so we did a little digging and discussing and we learned that this psalm is a big deal. This is actually what Peter uses to preach um, at Pentecost. And so <clears throat> reading what we just read in Psalm 16 and thinking of what Pentecost is and thinking of how we are studying the presence of God in our lives, it, it's blown my mind a little bit. So real quick, we're going to go through some of these verses and the beauty that there is in there and talk about that. So in verse two, he says, I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. God as creator is the definer of good and what's good and what's evil. And he is the source of all that is good. Remember at creation, he would create something and he would say, and it was good. That's right. And so then I like verse four, it says, the sorrows of those who run after another God shall multiply. Their drink offerings of blood will not pour out or take their names on my lips. He's saying those who chase after idols. And of course, back in the day, there were very real idols, physical golden calves. There still are. There still are. But in our culture, we have idols. Maybe we don't worship an object as much as we worship an idea. Yes, correct. I would agree. And, or just what our culture tells us, maybe like an idea like uh, popularity, maybe an idea like riches and fame, maybe an idea like um, if I have the biggest house, I get those kinds of things. Maybe pride, maybe self is an idol. And so here we are hearing that we get sorrow if we chase after anything but God. And that's the thing. As we study the, the presence of God, our creator created us for himself. And he created us to want him and to need him so that we would seek after a relationship with him. And if we seek after things other than him or try to find that fulfillment in anything else, we don't get good. We don't get joy. We get sorrow. That's what verse 4 tells us. Verse 5, it says, The Lord is my chosen portion in my cup. You hold my lot. And I can't help but think back to what we just read about Moses. And God knew exactly how much of himself to let Moses see. He knew, we talked about that, how exactly how much Moses could handle. And so the Lord knows our portion. He knows how much of us he wants to give us. And I can't help but think, as we read through our devotion today, it's saying like a lot of us are just good with settling for the omnipresence of, of God. We're good for, you know, settling for, oh, he's always with us, which my scripture that I've been working on each week, I try to memorize something new. It's Deuteronomy 31, 8. And it tells us it's the Lord that goes before you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Don't fear or be dismayed. And I love the idea. That's what I've been meditating on. That's what I've been concentrating on. The Lord always being with me. But if we are good with like, okay, the Lord's with me. God be with me. Just that blanket prayer instead of like seeking his presence and seeking what he's doing in and around us, we're going to miss out on the portion that he really has for us. We're just going to settle for something not that isn't our portion, something less than our portion, if we're not willing to open our eyes up to what God has for us. Um, verse 6, it says, The lines have fallen for me in the pleasant places. Indeed, I have a beautiful inheritance. As we read through the Old Testament, they literally divide up the lines for of the territory of the land for the tribes of Israel, for all the, the brothers, um, Jacob's sons. And um, what I said, what I noted there in my Bible is God takes care of all the details of life. Verse 7 says the Lord gives him counsel. In the night, he, he instructs him. And so God cares about every single detail of our life, and it is our job to pursue him and to seek him out for the answers for those details of our lives. And then finally, the last verse, 
It says, you make known to me the path of life. In your presence, there's fullness of joy. At your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. He is what? What do we say with Terry Lee He is where the joy is. He's where the joy is. And I, we say it, it's in my Bible study that I do every single day. And a lot of times when I finish, what do I do? I shout it out. He's where the joy is. Because I like to annoy my family. And, but, and so we say it and we might forget the meaning of it. You know, those trite sayings we say a lot. But truly, if we're looking for joy, we won't find it in anything other than than in him. And so as we look back, this is the passage that is preached at Pentecost and given to them. And we've been looking at how God, how we have his presence in, in all the different ways. We looked at how God sent his son, God the son Jesus, to be born and we get his presence. And then he goes back to be with God and then we get the Holy Spirit. And what happens at Pentecost? The Holy Spirit comes. And so we get a whole nother um, idea. We get a whole nother level of God's presence. And I would even venture to say, at least for me in my walk with him thus far, the most intimate presence because the Holy Spirit's who indwells us as we are Christians and as we walk with him. And so when I just picture Peter preaching at Pentecost, Think about it. The the fire, the wind, the roaring wind, and the fiery tongues. I mean, it's crazy in my mind anyway. And then Peter says, you make known to me the path of life. God's presence. God, the Spirit's presence is in and among them. And like, you can't deny it because it's visual, visual, visible, visible, and tangible in these crazy, miraculous ways. And Peter says, in your presence, there is fullness of joy. At your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. And so, friends, like, we are not doing this study um, to just, like, pet little baby Jesus and be like, oh, how cute that you were born for us. But, like, to really think about and concentrate and worship God for the ways that from the very beginning of time, before the beginning of time, God's plan was to be with us. May we never take that for granted. It's such a gift and such a blessing. May we seek it out so that he can give us the exact portion that he has planned for us. All right, friends, we're excited to continue on. We're excited that we're in our last week of school. We can sit and like read the word even more when we get to not go to school. <laughs> I'm so ready. I'm so ready to because... Turns out I live up there too. And um, we're praying for you guys as you continue to um, read the word each day and sit in his presence. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye.